Well, good day, everyone. Recently, I was contacted by a company that asked me if I wanted to review a light. And to be completely honest with you, I thought, no, I don't really want to do another one because I have reviewed so many. But when I looked at this light, I thought, well, there's a couple of things in this that might interest me or definitely could interest me uh, for the way that I work. Uh, and I thought that I'd share them with you. So I said, yeah, look, send it to me and I'll have a review of it and see how it fits my needs. Uh, and there's two particular things that really interest me about this. Now, the company is called Digital Photo uh, and the light is called Tree Frog. Let me switch over and I'll just show you what the uh, unit is. Uh, so this is the unit uh, that's there. It's it, the company is called Digital Photo, and it's Tree Frog RGB uh, light. Uh, now, there's a couple of things uh, with this. Is it's actually waterproof, um, and it's IP67. Now, if you're wondering what IP67 means, uh, I did find this page that explained it, and it says so. It's IP. Then you look at the six, and it means it's totally protected against dust. Uh, and then the second number down here, which is seven, uh, says it's protected against the effects of temporary immersion between 15 centimetres and one metre uh, for a duration of 30 minutes. So look, it's not completely waterproof, but if you did drop it uh, in water or something like that, or wanted to use it uh, sort of um, for a very short period of time, it probably would be okay. So that's what the IP67 means. Uh, and if you look at the light, that's why they're called a tree frog too, because tree frogs tend to live in the water and out of the water. Um, just to show you what this actually has, uh, it is IP67. Uh, it goes from 2,500 to 8,500 Kelvin. It is magnetic, uh, and I'll show that uh, in use as we're talking now. It's got special effects, and there's 20 of them. Uh, now, all these things tend to have this, but uh, a couple of things, like I said, are, are interesting about this. It's a 4,000 an MAH battery inside, but it can also work as a power bank. Now I have reviewed one before that works very, very well as a power bank, but this one has the benefit of being a power bank plus it is waterproof up to a certain period of time as well. Uh, so if you are using it in the rain or, or anything else, you don't have to worry about it. Um, it's a 17 watt maximum. The CRI is 97 and the Lux is 0.5 meters and it's 2000 uh, Lux. Um, it's 320 grams. Uh, the lumen angle is 120 and it's got a type C port that you use to charge and also to uh, charge up other devices as well. So just to show you the unit, and I will unbox it and give you a look at how this works. Uh, just to show you the unit here, um, typical sort of the way these are designed, but it does have a rubber case around this that I'll show you that, that would add to the waterproofing of this unit. And I'd probably advise to keep that on. Uh, and it comes with that case and I'll show you that. But basically there's just a power button, which is here. Uh, your increase of brightness and luminance, etc., is from here, these two buttons. Um, the um, buttons along the side, this is your menu button, which you can change uh, your settings. And then you have an FM button, button which switches between all those settings. Uh, and then you have the adjustment buttons here, and I'll show you these working. Uh, and there's a five volt power out through this section here. Now there's mounting screws, uh, a quarter of inch screws here, and there's also a quarter inch screw there as well. Um, so there's a number of these that are there too. Uh, and a five volt power C port here as well. Um, so it looks really, really good. There's also a strap hole which uh, comes through here. Your LCD at the back uh, will work from this, so you can see what you're doing. Um, let me just see uh, what the battery is rated at uh, here. The size, if you're interested, is 156 by 83 by 16 millimeters. Now, high temperature protection, it does say up here that uh, it will basically power itself down a little bit if it does reach 65. So that's sensible because if it was working under extremely hot conditions, it will power down when it reaches 65 degrees. Um, so that's just protecting it. So the light dims. Um, the type C input is 4.6 to 5.5 volts, 2.3 amps. The output is 5 volts or 2.2 amps as well. The battery capacity is 4000 mAh and fully charged. It will work from 1.5 on full 
um, to 16 hours, depending on if you take it down to its lower setting. So you're going to get about one and a half hours. Um, the LED life uh, time is 50,000 hours, so it'll last forever. And I did explain what the waterproof level uh, means. So, you know, you could drop it temporarily and things like that in one meter of water. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to test it unless I have to, but that's what it's stated as being. Uh, and it does come with a couple of grids and things like that that I'll show you in the unboxing in a minute. The weight is 320 grams. Uh, it tells you the CRI. It does vary a little bit depending on what your um, Kelvin is. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll have a little look at what's in the box. Um, so I'll show you everything that's included with this. Uh, and it comes with a great little case, actually. It's really nicely uh, protected. Um, so I'm gonna open it up and I'll show you everything that's in here. So inside, um, if you're looking at it there, I'm just looking at the monitor above so I can see what's going on. You get your little manual, uh, obviously, that you can read. Uh, and then at the top, this is your diffuser, and I'll show these uh, sort of working. Um, this is the grid that you use, uh, which I'll also show you and why you would use that. Uh, the light itself is here. Um, and this is the protective coating that's uh, around that. It's like a, a rubber sleeve uh, that is um, really sort of clips into the USB-C ports particularly uh, and blocks them off, I suppose, from any water penetration. Um, but it's really, really well made. I mean, it's, you know, solid metal. Like, it, they really are so well made, these lights now. Uh, and this is, you know, a really good quality. Um, you get a USB-C cable that goes, also an extension here in case if, I suppose, if you wanted to put longer leads or things like that in. And you get a USB-A to USB-C cable as well. Uh, you also get a cold shoe mount that you can stick onto the top of your camera, uh, which is here. And then you even get a little stand that you can use as well. Now this is only plastic, um, but you know, good enough uh, if you just wanted to stick it on a table or something like that. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the unit actually working. So there is a power button up here. Um, and if I click that in, the interesting thing that this does is it just turns itself on without bringing the lights on. Now that's great because it saves power because then you can use the mode dial and go through all of your different things to choose the one that you want to actually be on. Um, so I'm just going to use the CCT to start with and I'll show you how you can balance, uh, you know, like if you were in daylight or if you wanted an incandescent light or something like that. So what I have to do now to turn the unit on is just press the power button once again and that will bring the light on. Now at the moment it's on 1%. Uh, so if I want to change the power for this, uh, I can just come up now, it'll go from zero actually, so it will turn off uh, all the way up to 100% and you'll see how bright this gets. So now we're up to 100%, uh, incredibly bright. Uh, if I bring that down again, Okay, so we're at 1%. Now then if we want to change the color, the CCT color here, uh, the Kelvin, what I can do is then I can use the up and down here. Now if I go this way, it will turn blue. So the light now is very blue. Uh, if we wanted to make the light very warm, we can go the opposite way. We're now down to 2500 uh, that way. So you really can balance out between incandescent light sunlight or very, very cold lighting. Uh, so you've got a lot of control over that uh, as well. I'll just take this back up to daylight. Okay, so that's around daylight. All right, so let's now change to the next mode. Uh, so if I hold the mode button down here, uh, it will then go to scenes mode. Now there's 20 of these, so I'm just gonna scroll through these quickly. But what I do like about it, it does show a little icon for what's there. So the first one that we're looking at there is the police car. Uh, then it will go to ambulance. Uh, then it's fire truck, uh, lighting, or lightning I should say. Then we're on lightning two. Uh, the, this is HSI, so it's gonna scroll through uh, all the uh, colors. It's just a demo of, of it being used. Uh, HSI, which is another uh, demo mode as well. This is screen, so it's meant to represent a television screen flicking. If you notice it, it'll sort of just flick on and off, so it's like that's being used. Uh, this is candle, uh, you know, like a romantic dinner or something, you could have this as well. Paparazzi is like flashes firing away. Uh, strobes, so that's, you know, all your strobes going off. Um, this is meant to be like a high and low beam, so it's meant to simulate the car headlights. Um, double flash, 
there. This is red flash. This is green flash, blue flash. Party just sort of cycles through different things and, you know, gives that party effect. There's two of those that you can go through. Uh, this is just breathing white. So it just looks like it's breathing, you know, sort of in and out. Uh, coming out that way and then it's an RGB strobe. So you've got 20 of these uh, that you can use. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the HSL uh, and what it is is it will cycle through the whole range of uh, colors basically the full 360 so we'll start from red and go right through blue greens etc and come back uh, to where it started from. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll show you how the colors can change so you'll see that um, here it will start from blues and then it will slowly progress into darker blues then it will go lighter greens and think this is sped up so I, I'm showing you this sped up otherwise it just takes too long uh, and then it'll go yellows oranges and then back to red again to where you started from now the saturation at the bottom basically takes all the color out so it will be fully unsaturated and then when you turn it back to 100 percent it's completely red again now what I wanted to do here was to test how strong the light is so I started from black and now it's on 1, uh, 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80, 90, and then 100. Now it's a little bit overexposed, uh, but you can see the settings there are uh, 1 one hundredth of a second, f1.8, ISO 100, and I'm two meters away from the subject to sort of give you an idea uh, about how this would work. Uh, and like I said, I could probably stand back another meter if I wanted to and get it uh, reasonably exposed. So I think overall it's pretty good. Now what I want to do now is to look at the shadow. So we're going to put the diffuser on uh, to see if it makes any difference and soften the light up. So now you'll see the effect with the diffuser. Now I'm hand holding this over it just so I can put it on and pull it off and show you very, very quickly. Um, so there you go, I've taken it off and you can see the immediate difference in exposure. So it does really soften it up, but it also takes a hell of a lot of exposure out as well. So here what I wanted to do is use the grid. At the moment it's off. Now you can see me put the grid on. Uh, that also has an effect of exposure as well. Uh, so you would have to adjust your exposure or move in closer. But this gives you the control to stop where spilling happens. And I'll show that in a second how much difference it makes when you put a grid on uh, and particularly if you don't want it to get on the ground or things like that or you want to do rim lighting that's what I'm doing here you can see with Susie I'm just controlling where the light goes and if I take that off uh, you'll see what a difference it makes because the, she will get filled from the front and everywhere and that's the difference uh, the actual grid makes you can see straight away this is great for rim lighting and things like that so what I wanted to do here was test how much power this actually has uh, in real life if you were using it for photography. Now I'm two metres away and I took a reading of Susie uh, there and basically what it was was 1 one hundredth of a second, uh, f2.2 and ISO 1600. So you can see there that it's 1 one hundredth, f2.8 and ISO 1600. Okay, so this is showing you how the unit is without the case. So you can see it's very, very well made. I mean, it's all steel. Uh, it looks really nice. Uh, all your buttons are recessed in here. This is what the case covers uh, as well. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll put it into uh, the diffuser and also the grid and you can have a look at how that looks. So this is the grid on. They just have these sort of strips that you know attach at the back uh, that you can use and this is what softens uh, the light. So now we'll have a look at the grid. So this is the grid attachment now. Um, you can see it fits quite well. Uh, got those same straps that you put on the back there. Um, and that will be what concentrates the light like I showed you before. So this is how it looks uh, connected to the camera with that little cold shoe adapter. It's quite a nice little unit actually. It can spin around as well like it has a, a um, wheel that you can take off here and balance it to any position that you'd like. And this is just your stand that you have on. So you could just stand it then on whatever you wanted to put it on as well. Uh, you know, and also I suppose if you wanted to move the stand around to get a little bit higher or lower, whichever way you wanted to go. Uh, being those mounting points too, you could mount them all in different ways uh, as well. So one of the really good things about this unit though is the way you can charge things up. Uh, so you just open up the USB-C protector there, stick a USB-C lead in. Immediately you do that, it will show up with a uh, little... Um, plug there and then you can see that it's charging this uh, Rode uh, wireless go here so you could use it for things like charging up you know cameras uh, things like that your iPhone if you had that there and you that was running out of power and things like that too. 
Okay, so what do I think about this? Well, it's actually a really nice little unit. Uh, I love the way you can charge off this. Uh, I love the way too, hopefully it's waterproof. Like I said, I haven't tested that, um, but it's meant to be IP67 waterproof. So if you did drop it in water or put it in for a very short period of time, uh, it would be safe. Great for if you're using it out in the rain and things like that, because sometimes I have worried about that. Uh, so if you did need light uh, in you know, a downpour or something like that to have a nice effect, uh, you could use that and it'd be great. Uh, for videography, I love these things because you can hide them in all different places, you know, and, and you can use the effects and things like that as well. Um, so I really haven't got anything bad at all to say about it, really. Um, and I think it's it's quite good. So I'll leave the links down below. Um, thank you so much, Digital Photo, for sending me this. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye for now.